gentlemen, with another episode of Authors of the Century. I'm your host, David Letterman. On this special episode, we have a unique guest from our own backyard. Let's find out who he is. Ernie? Well, our guest was born in Boston January 19, 1809, raised an orphan, attended University of Virginia, yet dropped out due to financial issues. He's enlisted in the Army in search of his daily bread. A proud member of the American Romantic Movement, criticized for his science fiction work, yet greatly acclaimed for his mystery novels. So who is he? We'll find out after the break. Another thing America loves is hitting the open road. And now Burger King makes seeing America as easy as having flame royal burgers done your way. Because Burger King restaurants in this area have a unique Burger King travel guide just for the traveler and you. Full color maps of the 50 states plus 25 major city maps. Helpful suggestions on what to see in every state with free coupons good at Burger King and much more. It's a real road buddy and it's just a dollar at participating Burger King restaurants. No purchase necessary. So be sure to visit a Burger King restaurant soon and pick up the unique Burger King travel Travel guide and see how we make more than just burgers great at America's Burger King. America loves burgers, and we're America's Burger King. Hello again. Now going back to our guest for tonight. If your guest was Robert Frost, well, tough luck. In fact, we're lucky enough to have Edgar Allan Poe with us tonight. So, good afternoon, Mr. Poe. How are you tonight? I'm fine, thank you. It's great to have you here, especially after the great success Mask of Our Death has accomplished. I mean, we just had to bring you over in order to clarify this masterpiece. Of course. Truth is, diligence is the mother of good fortune. What do you mean by that? I mean that unlike those who call themselves writer, but go and dabble in other areas, I've made it my life goal to write, and only life through my work. Wow, uh, that's quite interesting. Now let's get back to this amazing art, if I may, of yours. What is it that stimulated you? The Great, the Black, Plague. So what you're saying is that the plague that happened back in the 1300s is what led you to writing Mask of Red Death? No, it's not what led me to writing Mask of Red Death. Uh, it's what inspired the setting. No, no, my inspiration came from those cowards who call themselves leaders, those hypocrites and backstabbers. If it wasn't for them, America would be the leading nation right about now. Wow, uh, alright. Uh, how about we move on to our next question? Your characters, they seem so real. I mean, it's scary in a way. How did you create them? <laughs> Look around you. What do you see? Uh, I see papers, pens, uh... No, no, the people. Okay, I see a writer. Stop right there. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. You see a writer. A stereotype that's enough for anyone to, vi to visualize. Because all stereotypes turn out to be true. This is a horrifying thing about life. All those things you fought against as a youth, you begin to realize that they're stereotypes because they're true. Right, I see. So what you're saying is that by creating these stereotypes... No, not creating, using. Alright, so by using these stereotypes, you manage to convey the realism of these characters. Yes. Uh, through reading your stories, I found that Fortunato in Cast of Montalado is somehow just like Prospero. Am I on the right track here? My, you're not as deft as I thought you were. Yes, you're correct in a sense. Prosper is Prospero is just like Fortunato. Both believed they were invincible and flawless. Both needed to see reality. Both made the world a better place by leaving. Hey, I just figured something out. That's the first. Okay now, Mr. Poe, I didn't quite get what the significance the clock had. You mind explaining? Death's forecoming has been resembled in many ways throughout my work. 
For example, in Telltale Heart, the heart thumping resembled the approach of his mental state's death. Here, I used the clock as my tool of choice. Each chime warned of the approaching end. Each time it rang throughout the hall, just like the echo of grains of sands make as they fall to the bottom. Interesting. So, death approach is in a way timed. What I just said. Now, how's Mask Over Death different from other people's work? My stories, unlike those but by so-called authors, can be told anywhere, anytime. For Mask of Red Death, the notion of spiritual weakness, when met with adversity, is forever existent. In the past, present and the future, man will shrink in the face of fear. Quite interesting. Now, the story is quite unique, and at the same time contains many unorthodox elements. Have you received any criticism because of that? Uh, of course. I never expected all of these simple tones to uh, comprehend the greatness of present. So, you have been criticized? Um, yes, harassed in fact, yet that is below us right now. How exactly were you harassed? Let's just say people with tiny minds make up for it with their bodies. I understand, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, how about we move on? In every story, there's a lesson to be taught. What did Mask of Our Death teach us? Humans in their nature try to defy death by building fortresses and raising their arms. Yet death is above us all, and nothing will or can protect us from it. In other words, death is inevitable. Indeed. Wait, what's that sound? What sound? It can't be! What's wrong, Mr. Poe? Mm, nothing, nothing is. Let's just move on. Okay, Mr. Poe, words are powerful weapons. So, now for me, Prosper's little speech made them jump right out at me. But many of our listeners are having difficulty with imagining what he was like. So, what do you think? Could you help them out? Prospero's moment of pseudo-glory showed the, the reader his pathetic side. His need to have all eyes on him. He's a hypocrite, a coward. All he cares about is the adulation. A narcissist is what he is. When he ordered those around him and belittled this apparent intruder by talking as if he doesn't exist. Strong emotions, if I may say, Mr. Poe. For our next question... Th there it is! That sound again! Something wrong, Mr. Poe? No! No! It can't be! Mr. Poe! Just, just get up, get it on with it and I'll go. Who? Oh? Just go, get on with it, will you? Uh, okay. So, as I was saying, for our next question, Ernie has a telegram from a fan of yours. Ernie? Dear Mr. Poe, my father always taught me that people always change for the better and that there's always a happy ending like in my bedtime stories. But your fairy tale doesn't have a happy ending. And Mr. Prospero didn't become a better person. He never got the chance. Why is that, Mr. Poe? I cried all night after my daddy read it to me. And now I'm not allowed to get any more of your stories. Uh, this is what I mentioned earlier. Simple tones, huh? Listen nice and clear, child. First, it's not a fairy tale. Second, in the real world, people don't change for the better, and there is no happy ending. If people changed, we wouldn't be in the situation we are right now. Prospero wouldn't have died, and, and we would be living in that damned fairy tale of yours. So don't look for happy ending everywhere and tell your daddy I don't care if he doesn't want to buy my books, okay? Isn't that a little harsh? It's the truth. We interrupt this program for a special news bulletin. Three young singers who soared to the heights of show business on the current rock and roll craze were killed today in the crash of a light plane in an Iowa snow flurry. The singers were identified as Richie Valen, 17, Buddy Holly, 22, and J.P. Richardson, known professionally as the Big Bopper. The aircraft chartered from the Dwyer Flying Service crashed near Mason City, ironically the setting for the prominent musical The Music Man. The pilot, Roger Peterson of Clear Lake, Iowa, was also killed. Oh my, what a tragedy. 
Let's have a moment of science for it. There, I told you they're coming. Now I'm next. I have to leave. Mr. Pope, please relax. Quiet, you. Wait, you must be a part of this. That's why I'm here. My story never got this much attention before in my life. Edgar, sit. I'm not part of anything. Edgar. We'll return after this song. But apparently, Mr. Poe had an errand to run. So, that will be all we hear for him tonight. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time on Authors of the Century. Donny Bai, Mohammed Al Salani, Abdul Wahid Jashkandi, Tarek Oda, I am Al Safadi.